Let's bring in Bonson Group Managing Director David Bonson. David, so I just got to ask you about this. Just sort of the, the dividend play. I know that you've picked specific stocks and you have your own way of going about it. Overall, though, the dividend play seems to have faded on Wall Street. Well, let's keep in mind 2022, the S&P dropped 22 percent and the Nasdaq dropped 35 percent. Our dividend growth portfolio was up 6 percent. Most dividend growth indexes were down five or six. We were happened to be up. But my point being, it beat by 20 percent in a down year. Right. So don't forget the defensiveness of it. Right. But, when, but the chart you're talking about more recently, it's 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 uh, Amazon and and AI fame, stocks and then and the AI. Yeah. Right, right. With, with, with NVIDIA and so forth. So really, it's a value growth factor consideration right now. The question is, can companies that never return capital to shareholders be considered good long-term holds? History has punished companies that do that. Eventually, management gets too arrogant and sets money on fire. So last week, um, guests joined Ford, HSBC, Weyerheiser, and a few others offering what they call a special dividend. Now, according to a research report, this goes back to Journal of Financial Economics. This is a a uh, 1999. It was intriguing. In 1940, 60, let's call it 62% of dividend paying firms paid at least one special dividend. In 1950, 46% of them paid, again, special dividends. So this was sort of a common practice a long time ago. And then more recently, these companies that have offered special dividends, we've seen near term this stock's underperform, but a year later, they overperform pretty strongly. So, I, you know, is, is this something that people should be looking at when you start to see a, a headline go across XYZ is offering a special dividend? It seems pretty enticing. So there's two things going on. Historically, you got to remember that there was lumpiness in profits and they could pay special dividends. And after ERISA passed in 1974, a lot of the holders of public stocks are retirement funds. They want periodic, consistent dividends. So companies started saying, OK, we think we're going to have this much to pay out in a year. Instead of going lumpy with a special dividend, right. we'll kind of average it out. Right. And so it was sort of a maturity in American capital markets. But then now there are companies and we own a few of them that have a good recurring regular dividend, but they pay a special dividend on top because some of their profits are going to be more lumpy. So it depends on the circumstance. There's no one size fits all on this, Charles. I got you. I got you. So it is something that, you know, take a look at it. Uh, You mentioned dividend growers, dividend growth. uh, And, you know, something really intriguing in terms of dividend growth, helping helping investors, not just on that specific company, but helping to understand the nature of the stock or the underlying company. Well, it's the most important thing is you're buying a company for its future profit generating. And if they're going to continue generating profits in the future, the question you have is what are they doing with them? Right. If they have to put all of them back into the business forever, that's called a Ponzi scheme. Okay. <laughs> At some point, something's going to go wrong. And you can't withdraw from that. You're constantly exposed to market timing right. risk whenever you need to withdraw. Right. So dividends give you a way of monetizing your investment, but also the recurring cash flows indicates a healthy company. But this this bottom point here is so important. Align line management with shareholders. Yeah, I mean, a company that is uh, desperately trying to hold on to all profits in the C-suite so they can go out and do more M&A, more deals. These are junkies. OK, these are CEO junkies constantly using your money to go buy other companies over half of which end up not going well. Mergers and acquisitions are sometimes they're hugely profitable, but the majority of them are not. We want to get a profit stream back to us as investors because we are the shareholders. We own the company. We have a minority interest, so we can't be in control. This is a way for us to de-risk our investment. So the bottom line then, I mean, these these companies that are growing their dividend, particularly on a really sustained, regular basis, Uh, You know, it's a checklist. They check a lot of important boxes off that all investors should be aware of. That's exactly right. They have to have lower debt profile generally, high free cash flow generation, and a less cyclical business. Something that can be, if you can pay a dividend and grow a dividend consistently, you must have a pretty good, consistent business. Right. Great stuff, David. Thanks, my friend. Glad you could help us out.